And we would go flying periodically. In fact, there was 24 airplanes in our group that went on missions. And there was, from each squadron, there would be, uh, let's see, three squadrons or four. Four and a 24. There would be six planes from each squadron. And I was in the 865th squadron in the 494th Bomb Group, which is otherwise known as Kelly's Cobras. My crew was made up of officers that four officers lived in one tent and all the enlisted men lived in another area. And they had, I think, like a big tent where they were all together. But we officers had a special care and four of us, co-pilot and the pilot, navigator and the bombardier all lived in one tent. I was Jack Berger was my bombardier and Fred Spring was my navigator and Norman J. Olson was my co-pilot. We lived in the same tent. It was a funny thing because my crew was made up of guys. None of them smoked, none of them drank. I thought it was pretty neat. Once in a while, Berger would break loose with a cigar or something dumb thing that would kid him to death that he wouldn't smoke around this. My first mission was over Luzon Island in the Philippines. That's the same island that has Manila and the capital of the Philippines. And we were bombing a place that was north of Manila. And Manila still wasn't secured. It was just about the time MacArthur was coming back. And we had been softening up the Philippine Islands for quite a while, bombing everything the Japs had there and doing away with their air force and their airfields and bombing for almost, I guess, a year before we came, at least six months. The group had been bombing. All those guys had their missions in just about before we got there. The group we were supplanting or replacing. And so uh, this mission, we were all set to bomb a little place called a penal colony. I think it was Cabana Town, Tuan Town. We were all set to bomb this penal colony. At the last minute, why the intelligence guys came back and said, no, don't bomb that. Bomb the town. So we went in over the town. And we found out later that all of our fellas that had been captured were in that penal colony, and we'd have bombed our own boys. Later on, when we were transferring to the Okinawa, that's why I flew over this town at treetop level and wanted to see what we had done to it. And there were some pretty good holes in those old tin roofs. There were people hanging with their heads out the window, waving at it. We were right at treetops from roaring through. It was really quite a flat area. There was no there was no mountains. It was sort of like a valley. It was off to the east was a range of mountains and off to the west was a range of mountains. Being so flat up through there, why there was no power lines or anything, at least it didn't seem to be where we were. And uh, we were going along and over in that country they'd have these fields would be water in squares. And all around the field would be trees. In the middle would be water, and it would be growing rice in it. And so uh, I would go up over the trees and back down. The trees were only about 30 feet high, so you know how low we were going. So I just up over the trees and back down. I saw this old water ox over there and this guy plowing away and off in the distance. And I was going up over these trees and back down. So I lined up right on him. So I was going to shoot him out of the saddle. And just before I got to him, I bumped the steering wheel like so. And it caused the big a bomber. It settles. And it just settled right on down like it was going to land on him. And, I'm, and then, of course... I'm pulling back on it about that time, and so it starts to climb out. But no. I went, at last I saw him, he was kneeling in the mud. <laughs> he thought I was going to hit him. Oh. <laughs> I thought, the poor devil, <laughs> the dirty American, he thought we were going to hit him. He's down on his knees. Oh. <laughs> and I suppose we maybe parted his hair, I don't know. <laughs>